Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selam ala seyyidil mürselin. Seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem tesliman kathira. Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbagi li jalali vecik ve li azimi sultanik. Subhanaka la nuhsi thanaen alayka anta kama thnayta ala nefsik. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله. We thank Dr. Hadi Mubarak for those kind words. We send our greetings to Dr. Aziz, the new president, Imam Majid, outgoing president of Isna. All the the great, great pioneers, Sayyid, Sayyid, and others who have built this organization into a very commendable and laudable pillar of the Muslim community here in North America. Alhamdulillah, the leadership of Visna wisely chose Detroit as the site of this year's convention Detroit is a history that's steeped, is a city that's steeped in the history of this country, particularly the history of the African American people. Detroit was the principal terminal point of the Underground Railroad. Some of you have walked along the river and seen the statue of the family group of people looking across the river towards Canada, which at one point represented freedom after the Fugitive Slave Act was passed in, 19, in 1850, rather. Detroit is also a history that's steeped in the history of Muslims in this country. We can mention the Yemeni community that settled in large numbers very close to here, Hamtramck, the Iraqi community, Lebanese Muslims in nearby Dearborn, Ann Arbor, and other cities here in Detroit itself. But perhaps most significantly, the history of the engagement of the African American people most significantly because many of the slaves who escaped bondage via the Underground Railroad, many of them were Muslims. And after the end of slavery, when people began to look for new forms of identity, Many found Islam in its various iterations to be that source of identity. It was in Detroit, Michigan that the Nation of Islam began its historic trek in 1930. It was in Detroit, Michigan in 1933 that Imam Warth al-Din Muhammad who would single-handedly orchestrate the greatest conversion of individuals to orthodox Islam in the history of this country when upwards to half a million individuals entered into orthodox Islam under his tutelage and leadership in the mid-1970s. It was in Detroit, Michigan that Malcolm X, when he exited prison, first became a minister of the Nation of Islam in 1953 as the assistant minister of Temple Number no. 1. It was in Detroit, Michigan in 1963 that Malcolm X issued his now famous and historic, deep and rich in meaning speech message to the grassroots. It was in 1963 that Dr. Martin Luther King first gave his I Have a Dream speech. 
right here in Kobo Arena before 25,000 people. The world, the world first heard those dreams that have echoed in the consciousness of all conscious Americans. I have a dream one day. Brothers and sisters, in that speech, Dr. King uttered perhaps prophetic words when he said the price that this nation must pay for the continued oppression and exploitation of the Negro or any other minority group, for the continued oppression of the Negro or any other minority group is the price of its own destruction. The price that this nation must pay for the continued oppression of the Negro or any other minority group is the price of its own destruction. Brothers and sisters, the theme of this conference is generations rising. For our current generation of Muslims to rise up in this country, then we must declare in one voice that every man, woman, and child in this country must be judged, as Dr. King said, by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. Let me share with you a, a poem that Dr. King quoted in this hall in 1963. He said, fleecy locks and black complexion cannot forfeit nature's claim. Skin may differ, but affection dwells in black and white the same. Were I so tall as to reach the pole or to grasp at the ocean at a span, I must be measured by my soul the mind is the standard of the man. Hard work. What better people to carry on the work that Dr. King, Dr. King started than our community? For does not the Quran tell us that a person should not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. Does not the prophet tell us in his farewell address that there is no virtue or superiority for the Arab over the non-Arab or the black over the white, except in the content of their character expressed as taqwa? Brothers and sisters, for our generation, of Muslims to rise, we must have a motivating vision. We stand in the shadow of a great African-American hero, Joe Lewis, whose statue stands in the atrium of this building. Joe Lewis served in the United States military, and those familiar with this story know the thankless reply that he received when he was taxed for the speeches he gave, even though he had donated all of the proceeds from those speeches to the war effort itself, he was taxed and forced into bankruptcy and humiliated. Another great boxer took a different stand. Muhammad Ali, who came out of the nation of Islam, who was mentored by Malcolm X, following the footsteps and the example of his mentor, Elijah Muhammad, refused to go to war. He refused to take up a gun and kill another human being. And he became an iconic figure for the heroic stand that he took, risking his life, risking his profession, losing income, millions of dollars, fame, notoriety, risking, facing the risk of losing everything, he took a stand that he would not 
go to war. Brothers and sisters, I say to you that we must, like Muhammad Ali, not only refuse to kill innocent human beings, but we must stand in solidarity with the victims who are innocently gunned down, in some instances, by irresponsible, reckless, and or rogue police forces. We must stand in solidarity with the family of Oscar Grant, who was murdered lying face down, handcuffed on a train platform in Oakland, California. We must stand in solidarity with the family of Trayvon Martin, who was murdered walking home with a bag of Skittles in Florida. We must stand in solidarity with the family of our Muslim brother, Ahmadu Dayal Jalu, who had 41 bullets pumped into his body as he reached in the pockets to pull out the keys facing the door and not the police who shot him in New York City. We must stand in solidarity with the family of Ayanna Jones right here in Detroit, Michigan, an eight-year-old girl who was killed when the police shot into her house aiming at no particular target and took the life of that 18-year-old girl, eight-year-old girl right here in Detroit, Michigan. We must stand in solidarity with the family and supporters of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and tell our country with one voice rising up that innocent life should not be taken. It should not be taken by the police, nor should it be taken by military forces. We must condemn the killing of innocent people in Syria who might have been killed as they minded their business by a barrel bomb that was dropped on their houses by the Syrian regime. We must stand in solidarity with innocent Shi'i villagers in Syria or Iraq who have harmed no one and are murdered by reckless and irresponsible murderers in those countries. We must stand in solidarity with the people of Gaza. Our president can condemn ISIS, it's easy to condemn ISIS. How about condemning the IDF who are murdering innocent Palestinians with bombs made in America? If you're gonna talk to Muslims, we want to hear some hard talk because we're experiencing some hard times in this country as a community. Talk about the difficult things and not just the easy things. Talk about the things that are politically incorrect and not just the things that are politically correct. This is what we have to demand as a generation that's rising up. And I say that with humility. Because at the end of the day, we can't elevate ourselves. We cannot rise up ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-rafi. He is the elevator, but he's also al-khafid. He's the debaser. And to be elevated, there's a simple formula. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had told us, مَا تَوَادَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ No one humbles themselves for the sake of God, for the sake of Allah, except that Allah elevates them. Brothers and sisters, let, our, let us humble ourselves. Let us admit that we don't have all of the answers, but with God, we can get the answers if He so wills. Let us admit that we don't have the power to affect the actions of our politicians. But if we humble ourselves before God, and in our humility we plead 
to our maker and creator, that he opens the hearts of the people, that he changes the hearts of the power politicians. All things are possible with God. Without humility, let us acknowledge that we are sometimes divided, that sometimes we heap our scorn upon each other, sometimes we denigrate and belittle each other, but if we humble ourselves before our Lord, our unity is possible. Love between ourselves is possible. Unifying our ranks to get on with the great work that we must undertake is possible through God, through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All things are possible with God. We can be elevated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have to humble ourselves, brothers and sisters. We can't arrogantly claim that we have the right path and everyone else is astray. We can't arrogantly claim that we are the courageous one and everyone else is a coward. We cannot arrogantly claim that we alone without the help of fair-minded, well-meaning, just Jewish or Christians or Buddhist or Hindu people in this country coming together that we cannot make a difference. We can make a difference, brothers and sisters. And with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us, bi-ithnillah, bi-ithnillah, we will make a difference, inshallah ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, there is no time for finger pointing. There is no time for self-righteousness. There is no time for us to back down. There's time for us to realize, and we'll conclude on these words. There are no villains. There are no victims. There's just us, a community waiting to assume its proper place in history. Let us rise up and claim that place, but let us realize that rising can only be with, through, for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Imam Nawawi mentions in his hizb, Bismillah, wa billah, wa min Allah, wa illallah, wa ala Allah, wa fillah, wa la hawla, wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no strength, there is no power, except Allah, ya Allah, strengthen us through your strength, empower us through your power, give us a vision through your vision, and clarity and bless us to be a community dedicated to your service. Assalamu alaikum.